We know that air pollution in Delhi is bad. It's partly because of uh, total emissions in Delhi and also partly because of meteorology. So let's find out how much can we blame meteorology for pollution problems in Delhi. W what is pollution? We measure that in terms of uh, micrograms per meter cube. There are many different pollutants and each of them have their own standards. But at the end of the day, concentration C is mass over volume. Mass is basically your total emissions. Uh, this can be tons per hour, tons per day, tons per year. And your volume is basically the air that is covered in your urban air shed. So your city might be of uh, 40 kilometers by 40 kilometers or higher or lower. And you have a, a vertical height which is allowing the air to mix. And you have some uh, wind blowing through the city that will allow for mixing both vertical mixing and horizontal mixing. All that combined will define your volume. So its concentration is basically mass over volume. If you have more mass, it means more emissions, then your, your pollution is high. Or if you have less mass, then your pollution is less. In the denominator, if your urban air shed is big enough, which means there is more volume, there is more air to mix, then you have less pollution. And if your air is very little uh, to mix, there is no dispersion happening, then your pollution is high. So at the end of the day, it's very simple. It's mass over volume. Let's look at one of these meteorological parameters which is uh, uh, key in defining what your pollution levels are in the city. So H, this is the inversion layer. So what is the inversion layer? You have a hot earth surface, so the air closer to the earth surface is also hot. Higher you go, colder the air. And hot air rises up. So if there are emissions in this area, whether it's getting mixed with the hot air and it's rising up, so you have very high dispersion and your pollution levels will usually be lower. So what happens in uh, in case of Delhi, for example, your winter time, your, your earth surface is cold, which means the air closer to the surface is also very cold and you have colder air at the top. So between these two batches of cold air, you have warm air trapped in between and it basically acts as a barrier for air to go between these two layers and also same time pollution to go between these two layers. So this is basically the inversion layer. So sometimes the inversion layer is way up high at one kilometer, two kilometer uh, height and sometimes it's really really down there at 20 meters, 30 meters, 50 meters and even 100 meters. So Let's look at Delhi's inversion heights. This, this is uh, an average that's taken from NSEP reanalysis data fields. And you have winter time, very low mixing heights. So these are daily average mixing heights. So within the day, night time are going to be even lower uh, compared to the daytime. So on average, your winter time mixing heights are lower and summer time mixing heights are higher. So going back to the same box, if you have the same mass and your volume is being defined like this, H, and your summertime heights are higher, which means you will end up seeing lower concentrations. And in the, in the winter time, your heights are really low. Height is, air is getting compressed a lot more. Lower volume means higher concentrations. Now let's look at another meteorological parameter, wind speed. If the wind speeds are high, then there is a possibility of uh, pollution to move around a bit. It will thins out and it thins out the emissions and your concentrations will be low. If the winds are stagnant, very low wind speeds, then pollution is not going anywhere and your concentrations will build up and you will have very high concentrations. Let's look at these two parameters, wind speed and mixing heights and how they affect uh, in in this calculation mathematically. Let's say you have emissions of uh, so 60,000 tons per year and that would translate into so many grams per hour. And your city size is uh, 40 kilometers, wind speeds are 1 meters per second and your mixing height is about 1200 meters. So this would translate into mass over volume to something like this, 40 micrograms per meter cube. If wind speeds were high, if say the winds were as high as 5 meters per second, 
then obviously there's a lot more dispersion and your concentrations will be even lower. If wind speeds are high but mixing like mixing heights are lower, those are 1200, it's only 100 meters, then your concentrations will be very high. If winds are stagnant and your mixing height is low, then of course your concentrations will be even more higher. All this is assuming there is no change in the emissions at the moment. We are only changing the meteorological parameters. During the winter time, the mixing heights could be as low as 50 meters. So instantaneously, your concentrations could be as high as 900 micrograms per meter cube. So this is all relative. As an example, you can see the effect of wind speeds and mixing height on overall concentrations that we are observing. So this is assuming that your city is like a box and everything is getting mixed uh, instantaneously. But uh, the atmosphere is not that simple. It's very complex. So you have a, a wide variety of activities happening in a city. Some regions are urban, some regions are lower, some have more trees, some have less trees, some are more constructed, less, uh, some are less constructed. And, and the, the meteorology itself is not the same even uh, at, at different scales. At the ground level you have a different type of uh, meteorology and up in the air above you have much different types of meteorology and that will affect your concentrations very differently. And each of these um, sub-regions within your domain is going to have a very different type of emissions, different types of meteorology affecting uh, dry depositions and wet depositions and overall concentrations in each of these areas. The box that we assumed here is not as simple uh, as it would look, but things in reality are a lot more complicated. On top of this, you have the inversion layer. It's not that simple, but mathematically skip speaking, the concentrations are still mass over volume. So you have higher volume, lesser pollution, lower volume, higher pollution. So what we have done is trying to understand what is the role of meteorology in terms of uh, feeding these concentrations in a complex environment. So we try to do some tracer runs over Delhi, uh, where meteorology is obviously changing hour, hour to hour, season to season. We kept the emissions constant. And the same emissions were observed, uh, were used for all the years. And then try to understand what are the changes in the concentrations with, with, the, with the meteorology alone. So the 0% here is the average of the concentrations that we have calculated using tracer runs. And your light blue here is the monitoring data observed uh, over each of these months. So you can obviously immediately see that your winter months concentrations are higher than the not, uh, than the annual average and your summertime concentrations and uh, springtime concentrations are lower than the annual average this is uh, again very obvious from the other two parameters that we just discussed your wind speeds are very low in the winter time and your mixing heights are also very low in the winter time which both of them jack up your overall concentrations in the in those months but there is one thing that you will notice is the difference is not immediately explained. Your actual concentrations from the monitoring data, that variation is much, much higher than these tracer runs that we have put together. So it which means that there is another player coming into the game uh, which is affecting these concentrations or the variation in each of these seasons. So it's about the emissions, the numerator of this simple equation, mass itself. So if you have more mass, then you have more pollution, and less mass, then you have less pollution. Year round, you, have, you do have all these sources contributing. You do have power plants running 365 days, industries running pretty much every day. You have road dust, your domestic fuels, cooking and heating happening pretty much every day, vehicle exhaust emissions, construction activity, that are all of these are year round. But there are two things which are very prominent and uh, happening only during the winter months. One is the heating season. So you have uh, these winter months, temperatures go really low. So you have a lot of people who fend themselves outside for most of, this, most of, these, most of the day. So they do need heating. So they end up burning pretty much everything. A lot of times it's garbage, wood, coal. A lot of different fuels are used for burning. And 
There are a lot of brick kilns just outside the Delhi administrative boundary which are making bricks and all these are seasonal brick kilns. So during the winter time when there are no rains, so all of them are operational and they also use a lot of these uh, um, biomass, coal and other uh, fuels and add up to the emissions during the winter months. And if you ask where are these brick kilns, this is the administrative boundary for Delhi and they are right outside and each of these dots is a brick kiln and uh, within this 80 kilometers by 80 kilometers domain there are uh, roughly 1000 brick kilns and all of them producing about 20,000 bricks a day and using um, a, a lot of biomass, coal and, uh, and other uh, conventional and, and non-conventional fuels for baking bricks. So all these things add up, so bringing your numerator, total mass of emissions, much higher during the winter time than the summer time. So here's the source apportionment work done from uh, University of Georgia Tech. They try to, to chemically speciate what percentage of pollution is coming from what type of fuel. So you can clearly see a big difference between summer time and winter time. Summer time, you have high winds, very dry weather, so you have a lot of dusty suspension happening. Winter time, not so much of dust suspension happening, but you have a lot of coal and biomass burning happening in the region. So this coal and biomass burning is happening in these two sectors. So you have a lot of waste being burnt for heating purposes and a lot of agricultural waste being burnt for in the brick kilns. And you also have coal use in, in, in both these sectors, which is uh, increasing in these winter months. And accordingly, you see that the summer months concentrations are lower than the winter time concentrations. So, how much can we blame meteorology for pollution problems in Delhi? It's a half and half answer. So, it's both meteorology and emissions. Your meteorology contributes to stagnant conditions and the lower inversion layers, jacking up those concentrations. And the emissions are also almost double in the winter months compared to the summer months, which means you have a higher numerator and a lower denominator, which increases your overall concentration in the winter months. So there's one thing we can't do anything about meteorology. It's going to be there uh, in a cycle year, year after year. But we can do something about the emissions by, uh, by controlling the emissions in these sectors that can lead to lower annual averages for compliance and health benefits.